Hey everyone, welcome back. Hey, so the last few days we've been talking about delivering online lectures. We started with low tech and then yesterday talked about standard tech. Today we're talking about high tech. Now, high tech involves a little bit more kind of fiddling with our system and learning some software, but the opportunities it provides for us are fairly significant. The main thing it allows us to do is deliver synchronous, real-time lectures. Now, up until now, all the lecture material that we've been developing, it has been asynchronous material, meaning we go ahead and record the lecture, post it online, and then the student can pull the lecture down whenever he or she wants. However, we can deliver, should we so choose, real-time synchronous lectures. So for example, I have a class that starts at 8.30 on Mondays and Wednesdays. I can deliver a lecture on Mondays and Wednesdays starting at 8.30 and students can actually attend this live lecture. But the nice thing is I can also record that lecture, post it, and students who choose to pull it down at their own convenience, the material will be there waiting for them. So there are a couple ways we can do this. One, pretty simple and straightforward. A little, the other, a little more involved. Let's explore both. Let's first look at simple and straightforward. Okay, the way we want to do a simple and straightforward live synchronous lecture is through Facebook. That's right, Facebook. You know, you know it, you love it, you hate it. It also provides us a tool, a mechanism, a functionality that allows us to do live lectures. Now, there's a few things we need to bear in mind. Let me first kind of show you what this looks like, and then let me go ahead and talk you through some of the things you'll want to consider. So first, a quick little ad hoc demo. So let me show you how simple it is to live stream on Facebook from your phone. So here I am on my phone, and we're going to go ahead and tap on Facebook there. Here's my app. And you notice that at the top left, just slightly lower than the top, it has an icon that says uh, live right below where I would normally do a text post. So I'm going to go ahead and click live there. And there I am. So now I'm here and so forth. And, you know, there's lots of options and features and so forth that you can explore. But if we just want to go live, then I'm just going to hit this button that says start live. And in a moment. Hey, so at this point, I discovered uh, during the editing process that Facebook and the live stream commandeered my microphone. So it was no longer recording for my own screen capture. Nevertheless, what I'm doing here is I'm live streaming. As you can see in the top left corner, uh, it says live. And anybody who happened to be on my Facebook at the time, such as Eric LeDuc there, one of my fellow professors, he just happened to be on Facebook at the time, gave me a wave. You see, anything that I was doing while live streaming would be visible to everybody uh, on my Facebook account. So I waved back and you see there we can actually have a conversation in real time. And it's going to go ahead and end the video. And now I have a few options. I can hit save there on the bottom left and that way I can actually save this video. Um, I can delete the video if I don't like it or I can hit share. Now, where would it share? Well, it would post to my timeline, which means that anybody who has access to my timeline would be able to watch the video. But now, if I want to share this on Canvas, I would just go ahead and hit that Save button and save this stream, and then I could go ahead and post it to Canvas, just like we talked about in yesterday's video. So. Live streaming on Facebook, folks, it's that simple. Okay, so there you are. Very simple, straightforward, no fuss, no muss. Now, here are a few things that you might want to consider. You can use your personal Facebook page, sure, but what might be a better idea is to set up a separate course page. Now, let me show you how you can do that real quick. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start here in Facebook. You know what Facebook is. And uh, here's your good old Facebook account and so forth. Now, you notice over here on the left, under Explore, we have something called Pages. I'm going to go ahead and click there. And you notice that what we have here, um, I have a page set up called Lawns Classes. This is essentially a completely separate Facebook page. People can join in, follow, and so on and so forth, just like they would your own page. So you go ahead and set up a page. It's very simple. It's very straightforward, not complicated. And you can then invite your students to join this page. And then in so doing that, you can go ahead and run live lectures. You can go ahead and record material and so forth. But don't worry, you're not stuck on this page in terms of delivering lectures. You can go ahead and deliver a live lecture on Facebook, but then you can record that lecture, download it, and move it over to Canvas. So if somebody chooses not to join that page or chooses not to be present for your live synchronous lecture, they can still get it asynchronously through Canvas. So that, as you can see, is a very straightforward, easy option. Let's look at our next option. Okay, your next option is Twitch. Now, I know before you go off freaking out and saying, well, hold on, this is a gaming system. This is where all the evil in the world happens. You're not wrong, <laughs> okay? But Twitch offers some functionality and some opportunities for not only professors, but all kinds of folks to live stream. Let me show you a little bit here. So here's Twitch. Yes, I'm totally intimidated looking at it as well. I totally get you. But yeah, okay, so it's all gaming. Gaming, gaming, gaming. Well, not really. Um, it's starting to expand. It's starting to expand fairly significantly. We have some folks doing gym. We have some people doing, you know, cooking and so forth. Now, you know, gamer cooking, whatever. And if we were to actually explore, and if I were to actually have an account, I could go in and show you where professors and teachers and other kind of do-it-yourselfers are using Twitch as a streaming platform. Now, there's a couple reasons why you want, might want to consider Twitch as a streaming platform. One is there are no barriers to entry. You can go ahead and start a membership, start an account, and start streaming right away. As opposed to YouTube, where I stream, you actually need a thousand followers or a thousand subscribers before you can start streaming. Now, yes, I stream over in YouTube. I prefer that to Twitch, but you know what? Twitch, no barriers to entry. Second thing is, this is where a lot of your students are. I mean, we might look at Twitch and sort of, you know, have a little bit of an aneurysm, but many of your students are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm on Twitch all the time. It's in fact because of another professor that I'm exploring this because there's another professor in our department who is on Twitch who has been experiment, experimenting with it. Um, and, and he's kind of seen some opportunity. Now, there's something we need to consider though if we are going to stream on something like Twitch or even YouTube if you have a thousand subscribers and that is the streaming software. So let's talk about that. Now, if you are going to live stream through something like Twitch or even YouTube, then you need some streaming software. Now, the software you're looking at right now over here is OBS, um, Open Broadcast Software, totally free. And now there are many, many types of broadcasting software out there. Most come with a price tag. This one is very free and therefore very popular. That said, it does take some setting up. It's not as simple and straightforward as one might like. However, it's very powerful. It allows you to do all kinds of things. So for example, 
I have up here a PowerPoint presentation that I can then cycle through and I can talk through the PowerPoint. Um, I have an image down here at the bottom, as you see, and so that allows me to put different images up. I can put up all kinds of things. I can even just focus on me, and then I can focus on the other monitor. I can bring both of me back up. I can actually have all kinds of screens ready to go so that I can switch seamlessly from one screen to another and have all that PowerPoint material and so forth ready to go. Oh, yeah, and this is when I had set up uh, inviting folks to take a picture and get some extra credit for having attended, okay? So this, this takes some doing. Now, I'm not going to talk through how to do this in this video. Instead, I'm going to let somebody who really knows what he's talking about talk you through it. So down in the description below, I have a link to a YouTube video um, a guy, oh, I forget his name, but you'll see his name, and uh, Nick, Nick something or another. And, uh, and he helped me set this up through his video. So if you're looking to use OBS and to see its functionality, go ahead and take a look at that video. And then I recommend that if you're going to use Twitch, that you find some videos. I'll, in fact, find some for you, and I'll put them in the description below so that you can see how to integrate your OBS with your Twitch account, okay? So, as I say, these are rather high-tech options. They take a little bit more work on your side. However, if you go this route, it allows you to do synchronous, real-time lectures. It also gives you a lot more functionality in terms of how you roll out your material. It also allows you to roll out different types of material. So, something to consider as you look to, you know, expand your online teaching credentials, as you will, okay? So, thank you very much for joining me on these lectures regarding delivery of online lectures. When we come back, we are going to talk about how to increase student engagement in an online environment. Since we're not there face-to-face -face, talking with people, interacting in a real-time you know, lecture classroom, we need to find ways of keeping our students engaged and participating in an online setting. So that's what we're going to explore next. We'll talk to you then.